Hi everyone, my name is Chris Gamble and I run Contextual Electronics and a consulting company called Analog Life LLC. In Contextual Electronics we teach you how to build PCBs, but we do it with, well we use KiCad, not, not too surprising there. Uh, we teach people how to use this open source CAD program. But when you want to move outside of that, when you want to start manufacturing boards, usually that's kind of, most people don't get that far to be honest. Uh, by the time you're manufacturing boards, you're either outsourcing it or you're, you're doing other things. Uh, you're working with other people. and while that's probably still normally going to be the case for many people, I personally was interested in some manufacturing stuff because I was running behind and trying to build something last minute, and it <laughs> I was I needed I needed a way to pick a, pick in place a lot of parts at once. So today we're going over the Neoden Four, which is a low cost uh, pick in place machine out of China, and we're going to actually use it. Now I've already actually used it once. Uh, when came in here, had to kind of figure it out, use some other examples that I've had here. But in looking online, you know, the tutorials actually are not that bad, uh, but there's some confusion there, and I thought I'd make some videos just around how to make it a little bit easier and actually how to get started using the Neoden quickly. Uh, that's kind of what Contextual Electronics did for KiCad, and I'm hoping to do the same thing for Neo Neoden. I'm here in my workspace in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, this is called M-Hub. It's a shared workspace. There's a bunch of equipment. I'll try and get some some footage of it and overlay it here, but uh, there's a lot of equipment here and including the Neoden, which is why I'm using it here. And uh, had to do a little bit of a weird setup. You probably also see in the video, I'm not sure if you can see, there's actually a projector here in front of me and then I'm retransmitting it out of here uh, to, the, to this capture program. And the reason I had to do all that stuff is because this is a self-contained computer, right? So in this, within this box, there's actually like a Windows XP based computer. Uh, normally you just output it to a VGA monitor and then you're done. Uh, in this case I need to do a little bit more and that's why it's kind of weird here. Uh, so you'll see some some weirdness with the setup but hopefully it all gets captured. So what we're going to do is we're going to load up the program, get the board, uh, pull it in here and then do some test placements and then I'll probably go and use a stencil, get some actual solder paste on there and then we'll run it all the way through. That's the thought at least. We'll see how long my batteries hold up. We'll see how long this all takes and I'll chop up the videos if necessary. So first off, let's uh, take a look at the board. So the reason I'm running behind is uh, I'm going to DEF CON, which is a hacker conference out in Las Vegas every year. Uh, this is DEF CON 26 I'm going to. And this is a board that I am embarrassed to show because I'm not sure if it's actually gonna work or if it's out there. But if it does, well, I'm excited about that. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, this is a badge that I've been building. So this is a blinky light up badge the Good Fear badge. Uh, so it's in the shape of a blimp. I was really excited about having lots of LEDs and this 3D shape. On the back side, uh, there's ESP32, there's LoRa module, there's audio, there's uh, USB, and then the driver chips, and then there's actually a gesture sensor chip here called the MGC3130. That's actually the piece that I don't know if is going to be working yet, but I hope it is. Uh, anyways, the front side, the LEDs I have tested, they mostly work, and uh, that's really the placement. So each uh, each LED is a single placement. So these are 0603 resistors. There's 288 of them on the front side. And I didn't want to do that by hand. I actually did that by hand uh, with a friend. We each did one board. It took an hour just to place, just to place the LEDs. And that's the first time completely fresh, um, you know, not weary from doing so many. I assume that the second time through it would have been an hour, 10, hour, 20 times however many boards I wanted to make. Either way, I wanted to learn the pick and place. I knew that this was here and I wanted to learn it. And so that's what I was starting to do. And uh, so uh, this is a great example because first off, it's just a single component. Second off, it's a, you know, 0603 is not, not large. It's a 0 0.06 inches by 0 0.03 inches. That's what that stands for, 0603. Uh, so not large, but definitely doable within the scope of this machine. So this thing, in theory, can do down to 0201. I don't really believe that. The 0603s that I did were actually relatively accurate. And then kind of the solder paste that I put on here, you know, as it as it reflows, it kind of grabs the parts and it gets it in the line. So, excuse me, the first, uh, the first run through uh, was pretty good, actually. So, um, yes, this is the board we're going to be doing here. 0603 resistors. Uh, so to give a comparison as well, that hour that I took of individually, you know, checking which orientation it was, because this di it's a diode, you need to make sure you have the anode and cathode right. Uh, doing all that stuff, it took me an hour. The placement was 10 minutes per board, so it, what a 
6x reduction in time and um, you know infinite reduction in dexterity and uh, annoyingness because I just didn't have to place it at all. I had to, obviously had to set it up, I had to get it working, but didn't actually have to do anything once the job was running. The real magic and the real plan in the future would be if I was making it, I'm, not, I'm making like 20 of these maybe, uh, if I had, you know, a hundred, a thousand, I could then run them through. You know, at a thousand, I'd probably, even at a hundred, I'd probably want to go to an outside help and have someone else manufacture it. But if I was in a tough spot and I needed to make a lot of something, especially when there's a lot of repeated components, uh, that's when it really starts to make sense, in my opinion. Uh, on the back side, obviously, there's a lot more components. There's a lot more unique components, and that would make things a lot more difficult. So, uh, didn't have, didn't even have components on reels for this. So I didn't even try it. But I think there's, there's actually some components on reels here. Let me take a, let's take a quick tour of the machine. So the Neoden is a, uh, like I said, a low-cost pick-and-place machine here. Um, it has, this one has rails, but you actually don't need to use rails. And this was something surprising that I learned as I was going through here. So these rails are installable. You can also just use a magnetic plate and put, uh, put a PCB in here and key to it and, and get that done like that. Uh, so in this case, it does have rails. I can run a bunch of these, but you don't have to. Uh, in terms of the feeders, there are 48. I don't know how many feeders there are, actually. I thought there was 48, but it looks more like 36 here. Um, but either way, these are all included with the build. Uh, and they're low cost and they're easy to use. And basically the way it works is, uh, you know, you feed in the tape here. There's actually, there is a, there is a, uh, a gear that actually draws the, uh, draws the tape through. And then there's another motor on this thing and it draws the, the, uh, the lead tape back. So I will actually need to install my LEDs there. Uh, yeah. So, and then it runs through, uh, it runs through on the rails. This is all, this is actually part of it. This is controlled. Uh, so it runs into the spot. I'll have to show you, I'll show you the, uh, the step to get that set up. And then once that's, uh, once it's through here, well, I do have a projector in line, like I said, a little bit of jankiness here, but it does run through this. This is the connector cart in between here. And then there is a, a low cost, simple uh, uh, reflow machine here. And all this is, is just different stages of, of heaters in there. Those are just, uh, PLCs that, not PLCs, sorry, uh, these are uh, uh, just temperature controllers, right? They're, these control heating elements. You set the temperature, it, it does that, and then, and then it, it, there's a, set, a speed set here, and it just goes through, and, uh, and it reflows on that profile. Now, as I normally do, I've, I, I use leaded solder still. I know that I should be switching over to, to lead-free solder, but uh, all the temperature and everything is set for that. That's just something I do. Uh, also, you may notice here at MHub, it does get a little bit loud. There's uh, machining equipment, vacuuming. So hopefully, hopefully the audio is not too bad here. Let's take a quick look. So uh, the plan is to load in a board. I'll show you how to start a new board, and then what I'm going to do is actually load up the existing, uh, load up an existing one, and then we'll just run it and show it actually placing. That's kind of the key thing here. Uh, don't want to. So I want to definitely show some of those things that caught me up when we were going through. It took me and a friend about 12 hours to uh, write a script for KiCad to actually go from KiCad to, um, to the Neoden chosen format of CSV. And then uh, it also, then, you know, just the logistics of figuring out where the LEDs go and kind of getting everything going here. It inspired me to make this video. So um, let's dig in and actually start using this thing.